Dear Dr. Kerr, right before my son-in-law passed away from his long battle with cancer, he told us about a wonderful doctor, a doctor who cared for him, listened to him, fought for him, and was sensitive to the needs that he had. That doctor was you. At the time, we didn't know you would become such a special part of our lives, but when my husband, Mark, was diagnosed with stage four lung cancer, we knew we wanted to go to the Ann B. Barshinger Cancer Institute, and we knew we wanted to see you. Cancer has already taken so many of Mark's family members. In fact, just before Mark was diagnosed, his beloved brother passed from cancer. Mark was very scared, but you were so sensitive to his needs. You took the time to calm his fears and help him realize that he was surrounded by people who cared about him and wanted to bring him comfort. There is so much to be afraid of when you have a loved one diagnosed with cancer, and it gives my family peace of mind to have you by our side. My daughter would often come with us to Mark's infusions. During one of our visits, we were given small stones to paint to help us reflect on our thoughts and feelings. On her stone, my daughter painted the words, Dad, fight. We keep that stone in our living room, and it is a precious reminder that Mark can win this fight. We know this because of his strength and unwavering faith, and also because of the support we have from you and everyone at the Cancer Institute. Mark's cancer is now in remission, and we are grateful to God and to you for that. I believe it takes a special kind of person to treat people who are hurting so badly from cancer. I praise God every day for giving us a skilled doctor, but also one who is equally caring and loving. You are someone we can always count on and turn to for reassurance and hope. What a blessing you are. So I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for the warmth and care that you first gave to my son-in-law and now give to my husband. May God bless you, Dr. Kerr. With gratitude, Laura. The treatment for cancer today is completely different than 15 years ago when I first started. Um, I think we're really making a difference. We're really helping people to live with cancer. And whenever we can see that we've made a positive impact in somebody's life, um, that's what we're trying to do every day. And it gives us fulfillment. Um, that's why we work so hard to do what we do. After I was told I had cancer, I looked over at my wife and tears were streaming down her face. She lost her dad to cancer when she was young, and at that moment, we both thought that I was going to be next. In the middle of all of our tests, stress and commotion, you called me. You were calm, peaceful, collective, and thoughtful. Six days later, you removed the cancerous tumor from my body and saved my life. Two weeks later, you called me to share that I had stage 3B colorectal cancer, and you recommended chemo to make sure it doesn't come back. I went through six months of chemo at the Anby Barshinger Cancer Institute with Dr. Reddy and his team. You were with my wife and me every step of the way to help us navigate all of the unknowns. Your confidence, precision, and clear communication helped us get through the hardest time of our lives. I just celebrated my four-year anniversary for my cancer diagnosis. I am still cancer-free. I am thankful for you and everyone at the Anby Barshinger Cancer Institute. I am now a new person. I live my life differently after cancer. I will never be the same again. Thank you for using your gifts to bring life to me and so many. With deep appreciation, Derek and Ashley. That's a reminder of why we all do this. Things like this not only impacts one individual, but whole families and communities. Um, and, you know, it, it strikes me when at the end, it's, it's not just Derek, it's Ashley and Derek and, um, and all their family members and friends. Thank you.
As I go through this difficult time, I remain so thankful for the amazing people who have come into my life, just when I needed them most. You're one of those people. On top of having to cope with the diagnosis, I also had the heavy weight of financial concerns on my shoulders, having already lost eight weeks of work for which I only received half pay. Cancer is already a physical and mental burden. So having the financial burden on top of that is incredibly stressful. I learned the Cancer Institute had financial counseling, so I made an appointment to meet with a counselor. Originally, I wasn't supposed to meet with you, but there was a scheduling change, so that day you became my financial counselor. I'll never know what caused that scheduling change that led to our meeting, but I'm convinced it happened for a reason. Initially, I was told that I wouldn't qualify for most grants, but you didn't let that stop you from trying to help me find one. You kept trying and searching for a grant that would help me, and you ended up finding two for me, including one from the Cancer Patient Support Fund. You had no reason to search harder, but you did. You took the time, you cared, and you didn't give up, and I'm beyond grateful. Because of you, I can worry less about my finances and focus more on my physical well-being. Your proof that you don't have to be a doctor or nurse to give someone life-changing care. You only have to be someone who wants to make a difference and put others first. You always be a healthcare hero to me. Sincerely, Vicki. It's sort of shocking in some regards. It's uh, day in, day out work helping people and um, never know completely if you make a difference at all or not. And then when you hear the words that it did, uh, definitely uh, surprising. Honestly, I hope someday if I have to be in this situation, somebody will do it for me. Dear Caroline, the day we welcomed my first grandchild into the world was also the same day I found out I had invasive breast cancer. My emotions were all over the place. I was terrified and so uncertain of what was going to follow. I remember the first day I entered the beautiful Ann B. Barshinger Cancer Institute. It was during COVID, so all I could see were eyes above the masks but comfort and care still showed through every pair of eyes from every person I encountered. I was greeted so warmly by everyone during my visits, the two sweet souls who drive the little escort cars in front of the building, the temperature checkers, the ladies who check you in and tell you where to go, the incredible nurses and the clerical staff who check you out after appointments. Shortly after finding out I had cancer, I was tested for the 23 cancer gene mutations. That's when I received a phone call from you. You had the very tough job of telling me that I had inherited a BRCA1 gene mutation. It was a lot to take in. I didn't want anyone in my family to have to go through what I did. So with your help, we were able to do genetic testing on my family to find out early if any of them had the dreaded gene mutation. Having you there to take care of not just me, but all of my family was priceless. You got to know my 79-year-old mother, my father, brother, sister, and two daughters. As a result of the testing, we discovered that I inherited the gene from my mother, and thankfully, I was the only one to inherit it. It stops with me. I can't say enough about this incredible offering and about you and the team who provide it. I am so grateful for everyone at the Cancer Institute, including Dr. Savendran, Dr. Kaplan, Dr. Bast, and Dr. Oyer, who continue to take such wonderful care of both me and my mother. And I want to especially thank you, Caroline, for being there for me and my entire family throughout this journey. 
Thank you for making your patients feel like family. The personal touch you give means so much more than you know. With much gratitude, Tina. She was referred to us based on her age of diagnosis and the family history. And yeah, she was really sweet right off the bat and was really concerned about her two daughters right from the get-go. So I knew that was a big concern for her. Such a privilege to be involved in getting to know parents and children and siblings. And it's nice to read that back that felt like she was treated like family by me and our team. That feels awesome and that's what we want it to feel like. Dear Dr. Brennan, I thank God you came into my cancer battle when you did, as I was beginning to have thoughts that the cure was worse than the illness. When I was diagnosed with stage four colon cancer, my wife, who was always my medical advocate, became very sick. So my daughter stepped up to be my advocate and walk alongside me through it all. My initial set of operations went very well. The colon surgery was done at Lancaster General, and the liver surgery was done at Penn Medicine in Philadelphia. Then came the chemotherapy, and something quite unexpected and unusual happened. My very first infusion caused me to lose my peripheral vision, and I was rushed into the emergency room at Lancaster General. It was determined that the chemo was going after my optic nerve and that treatment had to be stopped. The next treatment option was to try some very powerful pills. Unfortunately, the pills resulted in side effects that caused my hands to turn very red, dry out and crack and bleed at the joints. During our first visits together, you looked at my cracked and bleeding hands and your first words to me were, this is not really a quality of life. You stopped the pills and put me on new chemo and a 48-hour pump. You then patiently filled all the questions and concerns my daughter was saving up for you, and there were a lot. After meeting you and feeling your real concern for my welfare, my life completely turned around for the better. I gained weight, my hands and feet improved, and my daughter was very appreciative of your concern for me, not just in treating my cancer, but in giving me a good quality of life. I am now cancer free. I will forever be grateful to everyone at the Ann B. Barshinger Cancer Institute. And I will always thank God you came into my life as my doctor, as I am convinced you saved my life. With sincere thanks, Tom. When we met, it was so uncertain what the future held. We had other things to try and, and thankfully the thing we tried worked. And remarkably, he's been cancer-free since, which is so unique and, and, as he said, such a blessing. The Healing That Comes by Jan Richardson. I know how long you have been waiting for your story to take a different turn. How far you have gone in search of what will mend you and make you whole. I bear no remedy, no cure, no miracle for the easing of your pain. But I know the medicine that lives in a story that has been broken open. I know the healing that comes in ceasing to hide ourselves away with fingers clutched 
around the fragments we think are none but ours. See how they fit together, these shards we have been carrying, how in their meeting they make a way we could not find alone. It's an incredible place. I mean, there's so much support here for the patient. The resources that Lancaster, the community has available is really a blessing. It's mind, body, and spirit. We recognize that the medical oncology is one part of their care. We have chaplains, dietitians, counselors, financial counselors. We have so many people because we recognize this affects all aspects of life. Having that multidisciplinary factor is a really special part about working on this team uh, and something that I really cherish. Uh, I think it's a unique place, especially in our community, being able to have access to just about any type of care that we think our patients need and having that under one roof. It means people don't have to travel hours away for specialized care. So having this in your backyard is, is a big deal. The people here are, are dedicated and called to be here for caring. And to give world-class care in our local community is, is a wonderful thing to do.